Good afternoon, everyone, and I'd like to welcome you to another Lunch and Learn webinar session hosted by the JVR Africa Group. In today's session, we will be looking at using the Ravens progressive matrices in the youth context, but specifically so in our South African context. <clears throat> My name is Charlene Willifield, and I'm currently a research psychologist working in the research department at JVR Psychometrics. Now, this is a topic, the Ravens in particular, is a topic very close to my heart, as I was privileged enough to be part of norming the Ravens SPM version for the South African adolescent population. Now, as a research psychologist, a lot of the focus of this webinar will be on the research behind norming the ravens so that practitioners can use the instrument with confidence in South Africa amongst adolescents or in our youth context. So bear with me, bear with the research, but just as a perspective where I come from. Move on to our next slide. So. JVR has worked in partnership with Pearson, who gave us permission to not only standardize the Ravens progressive matrices for the South African context, but we also are now able to publish the South African adapted manual. So please look out for that. And a lot of what I'm going to refer to today in this webinar will then be from our South African manual. What can you expect from today? We're going to introduce the Ravens progressive matrices and especially based on what theory, where it comes from, we're going to look at South African context. Um, in particular, we're going to look at the South African adolescent norm study. And as I said, a lot of the research done. I think it's important for practitioners when something new is launched, when there is new development developments in an instrument, it's vital for practitioners to be aware of those additions and to also have workshops like this where it's explained and that practitioners can have a better understanding. We also will briefly look at additions to the Ravens Progressive Matrices South African Manual and what that is all about. Now, the Ravens Progressive Matrices was developed by John C. Raven. <clears throat> and Raven found that intelligence tests of his time was cumbersome long and difficult for the educational testing or the, and the setting. He wanted to develop a test of intelligence that was nonverbal, and he also wanted to develop a theoretically based construct of intelligence. Raven therefore decided to measure two specific intelligences as proposed by Spearman, and these two are inductive ability and reproductive ability. And we'll spend a few minutes on this theory and gain a better understanding. Now, if we look at the theoretical background, on your left-hand side, you'll see that according to Spearman's two-factor theory on intelligence, the performance of any intelligent action requires a combination of general intelligence, or G, and specific or S, specific factors or S. Now, these specific factors will be, for example, language and numbers, which is particular to each act and which will vary, vary from one act to another. Now, all intelligence tests measure a basic or general factor, which Spearman then referred to as the G factor. And this is available to the same individual to the same extent for all intelligent acts. Now, general ability, however, does not depend only on this G factor. So Spearman further hypothesized that tests or activities of a reproductive nature reflect low measures of G, 
because specific abilities to deal with challenges then become more important in the test. So he proposed then that the G factor is a function of the brain as a whole and the specific abilities are dealt with selectively in specific areas of the brain. So Spearman did, however, regard G as pervading all performance on tasks. Then if we look on the right-hand side of this diagram at Cattell's theory, who in turn proposed that intelligence consists of two components, namely fluid and crystallized intelligence. And Cattell felt that nonverbal tests based on abstract reasoning primarily assessed fluid intelligence, while crystallized intelligence primarily relates to tests involving aspects, specifically like language and numbers again. So these two components of intelligence were identified as eductive or fluid abilities and reproduction or crystallized abilities. If we look at inductive ability there in the middle, inductive is derived from the Latin word educare, which means to draw out or to come to new insights and information out of which that which is perceived already known. Okay, so this involves making meaning out of confusion, developing new insights, and going beyond the given to perceive that which is not immediately obvious, and forming nonverbal constructs to assist in dealing with complex problems comprising of various mutually dependable variables. As a result, the aim for Ravens, if we look at the influence of these theories, the aim for Ravens was to measure a person's inductive ability, which forms part of a person's general intellectual ability that was identified by Spearman. Now, if we look at inductive ability, the Ravens progressive matrices specifically aims at assessment of inductive ability by nonverbal means. Because remember, when we started to talk about Ravens, we saw that that was one of his main goals, a non-verbal assessment. So it is accepted that detection of any problem requires contextual perception. It requires beginning with a schema or a whole, which enables a person to then hold different things in mind all at once. So the analysis of a problem then does not reflect the selection of random information, but rather requires the investigation of potential relationships based on a person's understanding of that whole. Now, inductive behavior involves a perceptive process, which is active and not only analytic or reproductive. So it involves discernment to except that a particular solution to a problem is consistent with all available information and evidence. The Ravens pro uh, progressive matrices measures the ability to then adduce or draw out these relationships because the variables presented in the problems to be solved and between which variables have to be identified are not in themselves obvious. So the various elements and their relationships must be identified from information which is presented as unclear and confused. Now in measuring inductive ability, the Ravens progressive matrices tests reflect patterns of figures. And those of you who have, um, have knowledge of the Ravens will know that these figures have to be completed and they become more difficult, progressively more difficult. Um, these diagrammatic puzzles exhibit a serial change in two directions simultaneously. So each puzzle has a piece missing, which the candidate who's been tested must find amongst the options or the alternatives presented in each question or each item. The focus of the matrices 
the Raven's Progressive Matrices, is not so much on the discernment of similarities and the differences presented, but rather on the ability to draw out, as we know by now, to adduce these constructs, which make it possible to discern such similarities and differences. So in essence, the matrices, these figures, were developed to measure the ability to evolve high level constructs, which can assist in greater ease to think about complex situations and events. Now, this ability can be compared to Piaget's studies on the conservation of volume. Awareness of volume is not based on the ability to hold length, breadth, and height. Those are the factors in these figures, in these matrices. So it does not, it's not about the ability to hold it in my in mind all at once, but rather to be aware of the implications of the whole of these based on separate entities. Okay. Now, if we look at the Raven's progressive matrices perspective on deductive it, it, ability, we see that problem solving involves the ability to use feelings, to evolve concepts, to pay attention, and to check perceptions as well as check inferences and persist in relation to a task to be dealt with. Now, I know it was a, a mouthful on our introduction and on the theory and how Raven formulated the Raven's progressive matrices. So just as a bit of a recap before we go on into looking at the, at the actual research done, we can take the following together. So the Raven's progressive matrices, as we know, is a nonverbal assessment. It, it tests general intelligence. It is theory-based. Results are easy to interpret, and we will have a look at this in more detail later on in this webinar. We will talk about um, how the how scores are calculated, how it's interpreted, and how that interpretation should be dealt with by the professional. And to an extent, the Ravens is culture fair. Now, there's a lot of debate, and I think a debate on that will take an entire webinar, if not more, on its own. But we know that the Ravens is an internationally accepted as the most used and academically research measure of its kind, presently available for assessment of different levels of ability. So I'm going to refer a bit back to theory again, just so that we get an understanding of why Raven refers to the Raven's progress of matrices as culture fair. The initial series of the Raven's progressive matrices was developed for research into the genetic and environmental origins of mental ability. Although intelligence can be defined as an innate general cognitive ability, which inherently then implies heritability, Raven specifically argued against the building of assumptions of heritability into definitions of intelligence. So Raven worked from the premise then that the expression of inherited characteristics can always be altered by varying relevant aspects of the environment. It follows then that according to Raven, we should not ask whether the environment plays an important role, but which aspects of the environment influences the expression of the inherited, inherited characteristic. So in this instance, ability, general ability. Raven's aim was scores that would depend as little as possible on differences in education and experience. This is why we refer to it as fairly culture fair. Now, through research, it was found that results obtained through the Raven's progressive matrices indicate that the influence of variables such as education and home background are much less than many imagined. What emerged was that variation in the value 
people place on dealing with abstractions determines individual scores to a greater extent. And that is what we want to see. We want to see more that we are tapping into the ability as opposed to cultural background. Now, regarding the influence of environment, of environment on the results, it was found that although ethnic differ differences were found, such differences are reduced over time. So for this reason, it's very important that care should be taken to use up-to-date norms. A lot of this webinar will focus on up-to-date norms for adolescents in our South African context. Now, whilst differences do occur in different settings, the Ravens Progressive Matrices continues to be recognized as having similar properties in different cultural groups, with differences between groups representing cultural sensitivity. It has also been shown that the test items fall into much the same order of difficulty, both for people with different total scores and for people from different socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds. Basically, what we see is that we do not find in studies done that the Ravens is functioning, the Ravens progressive matrices are functioning differently based on ethnic background, race or gender. This is quite important, but we will look into that specifically when we discuss our adolescent sample. Then just very briefly, as many of you may very well know, the Ravens progress, progressive matrices consist of three tests. The color progressive matrices, the standard progressive matrices, and the advanced progressive matrices. Now, because we are looking at youth context and, I, and because I want to spend um, the time in this webinar on looking at our latest edition, the Adolescent Norms for South Africa, I will be looking at the SPM only. But just for a brief back background and to quickly touch on it, the color progressive matrices are used generally with young children, so ages say five to 12, or old people, or people with special needs, or those who have intellectual, um, who are intellectually impaired, or in the clinical settings. When we look at the advanced progressive matrices, on the other hand, um, it's often used in managerial selection, or for those purposes, and for research on cognitive processes. But like I said, for the purposes of this webinar, we'll be looking at the standard progressive matrices and specifically its application to adolescents. Now, in which context can the SPM be used? In educational, clinical, occupational and research applications. Now, it might seem a bit odd to list occupational settings here because we are looking at the specifically the adolescent norm samples, but remember the SPM can be used and is used for adults as well. So up until we have South African norms for up until 57 year, year old for the South African working population. The Ravens SPM consists of five sets, set A to set E and a total of 60 items that are printed in a single color. The first 28 items of these 60 items are shared with the Raven's color progressive matrices, but obviously printed in single color and not like the color progressive matrices in multiple colors. It generally takes participants about 20 to 45 minutes to complete this test, but it's an untimed assessment. Now, before we go into the whole process, looking at our normative sample for our adolescents in South Africa, I think it's very important just to retract as to why, why do we need norms? Why do we go through that extensive process of creating applicable norms for a specific context? Now, a meaning of a raw score really has no a raw score in itself really has no meaning to us. We want to know what that score 
means in relation to other people but specifically if we say in relation to other people we want that to be a fair fair comparison now here it is and therefore it is important to compare apples with apples let's use an example understanding norms better let's use an, an example of say the park run sally did the park run last Saturday and her completion time was 36 minutes. Now, Sally's completion time alone really doesn't tell me whether this whether Sally had a good or a bad run. We need to compare Sally's completion time for this run to other women and also to a relevant age group. So say, for example, Sally is a 38 year old, she's 38 year old, then 36 minutes is a pretty good completion time. It would have not been fair to compare Sally's results, Sally who is a 30 year, 38 year old female to say an 18 year old male's completion times. So just this idea of we need to have context when we look at scores and this is why we need to create norms a raw score in itself really means nothing we need to look at norms okay if we look at our adolescent normative study and our sample specifically that we used for our norms in south africa um, before I go into the detail for the study, I just want to say that we had representation from most of our re regions in South Africa. I also have to say that most of our sampling was done amongst quintile three to five schools. Now, we are very reliant on practitioners in the field who use tests say in private practice or in the school setting, we are so reliant on that to gather data in order for us to create norms. Um, so we are hoping that as we go on and as we can get more data, we'll definitely update the norms and also our demographics table. Our sample consisted of about 909 participants. And as you can see, we had significantly more female participants at almost 70%. If we look at our population group breakdown, we had predominantly black participants at 41.3%, as well as white participants at 39.5%. About 12% did not indicate their population group. And again, this comes from, we had various people helping us collect data, and it was not always indicated all the variables we would have liked to see. Later on, we're going to look at comparing groups, um, and I will refer back to it, but I just want to make note that you'll see here by looking at the numbers, when we look at comparing the results of population groups, it's really only fair to compare the black and white population groups. There were not enough participants in the other group to make it a fair comparison. And as I said, as we grow our data set and our source, we'll definitely be able to run more statistics and have more results. Now, looking at reliability, just a reminder, for internal consistency, we generally use Cronbach's alpha. And this tells us how well is the Raven's SPM measuring what it says it's measuring? How well is it measuring inductive ability? Now, generally for ability tests, we want to look at a Cronbach's alpha coefficient of 0 0.8 or above. What's also very important is we need to look at total reliability scores. So here in the bottom line of the table, this is what we are interested in. Before we go into detail on that, I just want to show you here at set A, we see that reliability estimates are rather low, given my guideline of we want to see of 0.8 and above. 
the reason for that is a lot of the candidates participants get most of the items in the first set correct because remember the nature of the test it starts off easier and gets progressively harder for that reason we see slightly lower reliability estimates but the ravens test is not made to use separately in terms of its sets no it's it was created to have a total score and use that total score now, if we then look at our total reliability for our total sample, it was 0.9. We're very happy with that. If we looked at the boys, we saw it was 0.9. For the girls, 0.9. Our black sample, 0.88. And white participants, 0.9. Very happy with these reliability estimates. If we go on to looking at ROSH measurement, um, why do we do ROSH? Now, I don't want to go into too much detail, but just to show that we did do this, these analysis and that it is rather important. We want to know that the probability of achieving higher scores on a test increases as individuals possess more of that latent trait. So scores on the SPM should increase as individuals have, possess more of that inductive ability. Further, we also want to compare groups. So item, the estimated item locations should be independent of the sample characteristics. But we'll go into more detail on that a bit later. If we look at our actual ROSH results, we see that the item separation reliability was 0.99. And this basically indicates that if I were to run the same analysis for a different group, for a different sample, the items will be separated at the same level of difficulty as in this case. So that's good. We are very happy with that result. If we look at the person separation reliability, it is a similar estimate to Cronbach's alpha reliability, and it indicates how well individual's level of ability was estimated. Again, we're very happy with that 0 0.88. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about infit mean square values, just to indicate that we did do this analysis and two items for the adolescent sample had an infit mean square of value of above 1.3. This indicates that people responded in an unpredictable way to these two items, given the location on the general inductive ability. But we weren't too concerned. Um, the, it, there was nothing that worried us, but just to show that it was done. Now, if we look at the person item map, um, I apologize that it's not that clear, but you'll get the gist of it. So you'll see that the items, the test items for the SPM appear on the right hand side, right? And these are distributed according to difficulty. Okay, and if we look at it, we see that here at the bottom, we've got item A1, A2, a lot of the A items, B items, and that makes sense because we expect by the nature of the SPM, we expect these items to be easier. If we look at the top items, we expect item E11 and E12 to be the, the most difficult items. So we were very happy with the distribution of items as it, it reflects how the Ravens SBM was developed. If we look on our left-hand side, we see that the respondents appear there. Now, um, here you'll see that not many respondents achieved scores higher than the most difficult item. And this is important because it shows that the Ravens SPM is suitable to use for the adolescent sample. We are happy with this dis distribution where most of the participants lie in relation to how easy or difficult they found the test. If most participants were here above the most difficult item, it wouldn't have really tapped into their ability like we would have wanted to see. 
Now, moving on to differential item functioning analysis, it basically diff allows us to look at the level of item difficulty for our different groups. Why would we want to look at the item difficulty for the different groups? Because we want to know and we want to investigate if there's any indication of test bias against particular groups. Now, for the purposes of Raven's um, SBM in our adolescent sample, we firstly compared white participants to black participants. And you'll recall why only those two groups based on our sample sizes. Then we also look at the um, level of item difficulties between male and female, boys and girls participants. So to start off with our diff results across population groups, 19 items could be flagged as possibly reflecting diff. We don't really see any pattern. There's no, no reason for concern if we look at these items. As you can see, some of the items white respondents found more difficult to endorse. Whereas on the other hand, some of the other items black respondents found more difficult to respond to. But like I said, no reason for concern, nothing in this, there's no pattern to concern us. If we look at a test characteristic curve across the population groups, we can see that as that for both groups, found and responded in a way that shows that as the items became progressively more difficult, they had difficulty to respond to it. So as you can see on this diagram, no real indication that black and white participants responded to this test differently. And we are not concerned really about test bias. So this is really good to see and it makes we need to know that when we use this test amongst different population groups in South Africa, that it is a fair assessment. Therefore, the reason for these, these in-depth statistical analysis. Now, if we look at the differ across gender, 14 items could be flagged as possibly reflecting difference. Um, these items, again, you'll see some of the items boys found more difficult. On the other hand, some of the other items girls found more difficult. Again, no reason for concern, no pattern that concerns us. If we look at the test characteristic curve across gender, we see the same pattern for both girls and boys when they respond to um, when they responded to the Ravens. So no reason for concern with regards to bias. If we look at the administration of the Ravens, of the SBM in particular, um, it is classified on the HBCSA list for psychological tests. And as a result, you have to be a registered professional with the HBCSA in the category of psychology or psychometry to be able to administer this test. Um, there's no formal training required to do the Ravens and all forms, so from the CPM, SPM up to the APM are available and in paper and um, pencil version. And then you've got two options for scoring. You can either use the easy score paper administration or you can use the scoring sheet. The scoring sheet is a cheaper option and is often used when groups of people are ministered. Bit more labor intensive though to, to mark that. We are hoping that early next year, early in 2019, the Ravens SPM specifically will be available on the JVR online portal to administer it there and to also have a report option available after completion. Now the Ravens SPM, as with all the other versions of the Ravens, progressive matrices can be administered to individuals or in a group setting. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail on administration guidelines because many of you are trained in the profession and already know these guidelines, but just specifically in the manual, they refer to the fact that for group administrations, um, for every 10 to 15 people, um, one supervisor should be added. 
as with any testing in psycho psychology or psychometrics, the, it must be a calm and quiet setting. Participants must be comfortably seated. If group, set if group assessments are conducted, all participants should be facing the person who's giving the instructions. So they all should face the same direction. There should be sufficient space for the supervisors to move around. And um, in the group setting specifically, please just ensure that participants cannot copy other participants' responses. Now, if we look at the scoring for the Ravens, it's um, scored on the number of correct responses. So in other words, if a candidate gets, it has a correct answer, he gets one mark for each correct answer. The SPM has a maximum score of 60, given that there are 60 items, and of course a minimum score of zero if none of the answers are, on, if none of the items are answered correctly. It's very important that if a candidate gives more than one answer on one problem, it must be scored zero. They cannot have two or more answers for an item because then they could have just by chance guessed the right answer. Um, so, but that is part of the administration and it is given clearly in the instructions that should they accidentally have the wrong answer, that it should be scratched out or crossed over and they should indicate their correct answer. It's also very important to look at set A and the first five responses. You want these to be correct, the first five responses to set A, um, in order to determine if your participant or participants have grasped the nature of the problem. Because if they haven't grasped the nature of the problem, it is not fair to use the results of the test. And you cannot say with certainty that you're actually testing ability if they haven't grasped what you've explained by it and how to complete this test. Now, if we look at the scoring further on, it's so important to note that the Raven score is not an IQ score. However, it is normed by age. And for our adolescent sample, we have a normative sample. We have norms available for ages 12 up until 16 and a half. Now, of course, we would want to bridge that gap from 16 and a half to 18, but we still need data. So for now, published in our manual, norms available for ages 12 up to 16 and a half. And those of you who are familiar with the Ravens will know how it's categorized, right? So 12, 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half, and so forth. It's very important in the case of the SPM to take that raw score of 60 out of 60 and convert it to a norm score. We spoke about why it's so important to have a norm score and the norm score used in Ravens is a percentile score. A percentile score is a standard scale score that compares the raw score that the individual gets on the test with the scores of my norm sample. And here it's very important. That's why we're very excited about the fact that we have South African norms, because if you are um, administering the test to a South African individual, you want to actually compare that raw score to percentile scores from the South African population. Or you want to convert it to a percentile score that you then con can compare to percentile scores from the South African norm sample. Raw scores can not be interpreted. Like I've used the example when I explained norms, you cannot interpret or use a raw score. You have to convert it to a percentile score and you can only use that percentile score. Now moving on to interpretation. The percentile score indicates the individual's position or rank when I compare it to the norm sample. 
okay? And percentile scores range from zero to 100. As I've said, it indicates rank. So let's use, for example, if a participant got a percentile score of 50, this would indicate that the, in, that the individual has scored better or equal to 50% um, of my norm sample. But then on the other hand, it also indicates that 50% of my norm sample scored higher than my individual. Let's say my individual lies at the 75th percentile. This would indicate that the individual has scored better than or equal to 75% of my norm sample. But on the other hand, 25% of my norm sample scored higher than my individual. Now, if you are sure that you've looked at the first responses from the Ravens SPM set A, the first five responses, and you are sure that the um, individual understood or grasped the nature of this test, and if you have considered cultural background and you are comfortable with the result as a professional, then you can use these guidelines to as a grading system of percentile scores. Uh, but again, of course, this goes with a lot of caution. You need to be confident that the assessment was the right tool for the purposes used and not to falsely or inaccurately then grade people, individuals. So be very wary of that. Um, percentile scores of zero to five considered intellectually impaired, six to 10 definitely below average, 10 to 24 below average, um, 25th to 49th percentile average minus, 50th to 74th average plus, 75th to 89th above average, 90th to 94th definitely above average, and then the 95th to 100th percentile intellectually superior. Okay, it's very important that you never report the candidate's result in percentile scores. You're not going to give in your feedback to your participant um, in your report that you compile of, of your various assessments used, and there you have it, your percentile score. It's not how it should communicate it, should be communicated. Instead, you should rather provide a narrative response. And here it's very important to use language that's easy for the participant to understand. What, what can the participant make of his or her results? And remember, no percentile scores, so no numbers. Um, never use Raven's progressive matrices results in isolation. Um, as you know, as practitioners and as professionals, um, to always look at a battery of assessments and not just at one assessment result or one test result. And we will look at a case study a bit later on. As we've spoken about it, it's, um, very important to translate the scores into an understandable language rather than giving that score. It's also important to check discrepancies. Now here, if a person's score on one of the sets, remember the set A to E, um, deviates by more than two points, um, the total score on the test must be interpreted to determine whether it could be caused by an incorrect reasoning process um, chance selection, so random selections, getting it right by chance, or someone wanting to fake a low score um, and is not aware of the pattern of responses by the less able. So again, just that putting that check into place before you go on and interpret the results and give feedback on the results. If we look at uh, the Raven's progressive matrices in general and the Flynn effect, we see that the, it could be observed, but very importantly, whether or not the candidate is from a developed or developing country actually affects the magnitude of this Flynn effect. We also see that with increasing age, the Raven's progressive matrices scores declined each year by about half an IQ point. 
childhood IQ did not co-vary with either age or practice effects, meaning that the influence of childhood IQ is fit as a fixed effect on fluid intelligence in later life. And I'd just like to touch on this also in addition to our South African manual. Um, we were able to translate the instructions of all the Ravens progressive matrices, so CPM, SPM and APM, into Afrikaans, Sutu and Zulu. So it's now available in four languages, Afri uh, English, Afrikaans, Sutu and Zulu. Um, now remember also that Ravens instructions is not a strict um, guideline, it, 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 it's that, it's a guideline. So, um, of course, people have been using translated instructions in, in the South African context, but we do feel that having these translations available in the manual does make the process easier. Um, it gives that guideline. We also hope to have the instructions available in all our formal South African languages as soon as possible. Um, the process followed for these instructions was forward and backward translation by professional translators. And after the backward translation process occurred, we had psychology professionals review the translations in their home language. So that was very important for us that it's that um, we had that professional check and that it still made sense and that it still said what it should be saying and that all the versions of instructions, the various languages, instruct the same assessment, that we are still testing the same thing. I also want to make a note here before I forget that the Ravens, um, our instructions and our new South African manual with all our norms, there's no changes to the actual items of the Ravens. So the items for all three versions of the Ravens remain unchanged, it's just that we now have the manual available with our South African norms and of course that guidelines in the translated languages. If we look at cross-cultural um, settings, we know that cross-cultural studies contribute significantly to an understanding of test validity and the usefulness of the test stems from a large pool of data. So we look at age, ethnicity and socioeconomic status together with normative data obtained in different countries and regions. Now, ethnicity and social status are important variables to take into account when looking at your Ravens progressive matrices results. So yes, we know that we didn't find any test bias, but to always consider ethnicity and social status when interpreting those results. I'd like to look at a quick case study. Um, about two or three years ago, we tested 141 grade 10 learners from the Free State region. 59% of them were female, again, more females. Um, and they completed a test battery. It, it, the idea was to help them with selecting subjects and further on, or sorry, to understand if they had the correct subjects and to further on start to guide them in what it is that they want to do after school, after completing school. Now, these grade 10 learners completed a test battery of that tested career interest and specifically the Maria career matrix was used. They also completed the SPM in order for us to look at ability and they completed the MMTIC, the murphy meisner type indicator for children. And this we looked at personality. So here you will see, we didn't just look at one aspect of the child, but as a whole, we used a battery of assessments. Now I'm not gonna go into in-depth um, discussion of all of the results. I'm going to look at the results specifically or specific to the SPM as this is what this webinar is about. There were no differences in cognitive ability, okay, or um, that's obviously measured by the SPM, between different personality preferences. And this is exactly what we want to see. We don't want, we don't foresee, and theory does not indicate that 
different personality types should score different on ability tests. Those are not related. So, of course, very happy to see that in this case study particular no differences in cognitive ability between our personality preferences. Where we did see a strong relationship, however, was a strong positive relationship between average academic performance, so grades, school grades, and cognitive ability. And as you can see, the correlation of 0.57. And this we do expect that those children with higher ability um, found it easier in their school subjects and as a result had higher grades. In conclusion, the Ravens progressive matrices assess the ability to form creative new insights or the ability to form high level, largely non-verbal constructs which make it easy to think about complex issues. Evidence suggests that the Ravens progressive matrices are among the purest measures of determining this ability and the scores should normally be accompanied by information relating to the respondent's ability to organize his or her thoughts and behavior. So again, we never look just at a, a test results in isolation, but to look at it in combination with qualitative data, it could be interviews and such, geographical information, remember we spoke about the cultural context, socioeconomic status, and then of course other psychological measurements that should be used. Now, um, results should always be interpreted from a contextual perspective as it could be influenced also by factors such as emotional conditions like an anxiety bad eyesight, these should always be considered. If the, especially in children or in adolescents, they, they're not used to taking tests at that age. So be, be sensitive to the fact that the individual might be anxious, or if say in a group setting, if that child is sitting at the back of the group assessment, was that child able to see the demonstration? of the items. Was he or she able to, I mean, he or she might not understand it by a mere factor that he or she couldn't see it. So things like that are always, always important to consider. But I do know that you guys are well aware of this in the testing environment, but just a kind reminder. I would like to thank you for the opportunity and thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope that this gave you a thorough understanding that the Ravens SVM is a proper tool to use among adolescents in our South African context. What's really great about this assessment is that it is nonverbal in answering the test. And we know that certain other assessments that we currently have available in South Africa that test ability are very language specific. It's um, children have to answer it in a language um, which has its own issues. And um, it's not, we don't have norms for South Africa, whereas we're really excited to finally have norms for our adolescents in our South African context for the Ravens SPM. All of my information I got from the Ravens Progressive Matrices South African User Manual, and I invite you to also refer to that. Should you have any questions for me regarding anything, the case study, more information, on our um, norm studies, please feel free to send me an email at charlene.willyfeed at jvrafrica.co.za. And again, I thank you for this and I hope you have a lovely afternoon.